Today's matchup between the Atlanta Braves and the Boston Red Sox is brought to you by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. Sunshine and temperatures in the 80s in Florida for Red Sox spring training as the Sox open Grapefruit League action on the road against the Braves. With that, we say hello and thanks for joining us alongside Lou Merloni. I'm Mike Monaco. Tom Karen joins us in a moment. And Lou, baseball is back. So excited to be here. And it's going to look different, too, with the rule changes, most notably the pitch timer. Yeah, some of the most drastic changes we've seen in years. And the idea is to put the ball in play more, right? See more action. More importantly, really increase the pace of play. Now, I think the fans are really going to like the new product. But it's going to be an adjustment for the players. It's going to be an adjustment for us. And it's going to be an adjustment for the umpire as well but that's what spring training's for it sure is we've got nine innings to sink our teeth into it and a full month of spring training but some of the headlines here for what it will look like all right so the pitch timer 30 seconds between batters and then between each pitch 15 seconds with the bases empty and 20 seconds with a runner on now in the minor leagues where they've tested this they chopped off an average of 25 minutes per game Next up, say goodbye to the shift. You got to have two infielders on either side of the second base bag when the pitch is released, and your feet can't be on the outfield grass, so there's no more rovers out in right field. And then the bases are bigger. First, second, and third are now 18 inches. They used to be 15 inches. The thinking here is promoting aggressive base running and then also player safety. So those are the big ones. We're going to get more into it. But, of course, pace of play and the pitch timer is the biggie. Yeah, I've always felt like the starting pitcher controls the pace of the game. Now, the young kids here in camp are used to it, right? They've come through the minor leagues, no problem. Watch for the veterans. See how they adjust, right? But I think we've all been waiting for this for a long, long time. I and mean, I think it's the right thing baseball's doing. We will dig into it together here today as the Red Sox open up Grapefruit League action. They've had some of their regulars make the trip, including Christian Arroyo, who bats second and plays second for the Sox, who tangle with the Braves, coming up next. Red Sox in their Grapefruit League opener against the Braves. All right, so we talked about the pitch timer, and this is how it will look on our scorebook. We will start popping this up when there are 10 seconds left to pitch. It's sort of like a, a play clock in football or a shot clock in basketball. And as we said, we will dive into this over the course of nine innings today and a month of spring training. All right, let's get to the Red Sox lineup brought to you by buyatoyota.com, Toyota's official website for deals. Greg Allen leads off. The speedster is in left. Christian Arroyo, we told you he's in there batting second and playing second. Rymel Tapia has joined the Red Sox. He's in center. Rob Snyder is the right fielder and the cleanup man. Bobby Dahlbeck has made the trip. He bats fifth and plays first. Narciso Crook is the DH. Caleb Hamilton, the catcher. Matthew Lugo starts at third base. And the speedy David Hamilton is the shortstop. They face the Braves starting pitcher, the former first round pick, Colby Allard, who is a depth piece and might get a shot in the Braves rotation this year. Well, I think defensively, you're going to see a lot of the regulars here for the Atlanta Braves starting in the infield. Look at third base, Austin Riley, shortstop, Vaughn Grisham at second base. It'll be Luke Waddell, and at first base, it'll be Matt Olson in the outfield going left to right. Eddie Rosario will be in left. Michael Harris, the second, will be in center field. And Ronald Acuna Jr., he will be in right field. Doing the catch, it'll be Chadwick Trump. And he'll be catching, as Mike said, the 25-year-old lefty, Colby Allard. The umpires are brought to you by buyatoyota.com, Toyota's website for deals. And they have a pack on their belt, and they have a buzzer on their wrists or on their ankles as well that they can wear and that buzz them when it hits zero on the pitch timer. Sox beat Northeastern yesterday 5-3, and now in the Grapefruit League opener, off we go with ball one to Greg Allen. Colby Allen, you mentioned once a first-round pick, was actually traded to Texas for Chris Martin before he was traded back here for Jake Odorizzi. In the offseason, he said a change of scenery probably seemed like what was coming for Colby Allard. As you see, top left of your screen, the pitch clock. Again, base is empty, so 15 seconds between pitches. And you can step off a couple of times without penalty, which Colby Allard did there. It looks like we have a timeout. The gate out in center field is wide open. Here we go. Starting to get that thing closed. 
I was wondering if we had our first like umpire timeout in the pitch <laughs> clock scenario, which I think we're all kind of working through here a little bit today. Yeah, we're on high alert for all sorts of stoppages and disengagements. Allen rolls it left side at Vaughn Grissom, competing for the starting shortstop job for the Braves, and he throws out Allen. Grisham, a young player, came up virtually from A ball last year and trying to become that starting shortstop, and I would think probably has a good chance of becoming that. He's just sensational last year when he came up, especially when you think about where he came from. He skipped so many levels to yep. get here. Yeah, Dansby Swanson is now a Chicago Cub. Brings up Christian Arroyo, one of a few regulars in the lineup for Alex Cora here today. It will be a loaded lineup for the Red Sox tomorrow in action back in Fort Myers. And Arroyo headlines the crop in here today. Bounces the 1 0 away from Austin Riley. And Arroyo reaches on an error here with one out in the first. Yeah, this ball kind of eats Austin up. And when you look at where he was with that ball, it's like one more step. I don't know if it came back on him because he almost set up to backhand it. But really, the ball was hit right and split his body. Could have got in front of it, made that play. But again, first ground ball, live bat early in spring training. It's an adjustment for everybody to get that first step. Couple of games across Major League Baseball yesterday. And a loaded slate here today. Rymel Tapia, the batter. And he just used. Well, no, did he get called for a strike there? Or was that his first time out? I don't think Tapio, that was a strike. He was not ready in a ready position at the eight second mark, which is an automatic strike now for the hitter. All right, so you've got the pitching component of it 15 seconds with the bases empty, 20 seconds with a runner aboard. But as you said, the batter has to be alert to the pitcher when that pitch timer has wound down to eight seconds. So it was a strike to start. And now the 1 1 is in there for a called strike as well. You know, really on a camp, I don't think that bothers you too much. This is why it's an adjustment right now. But next month, when we, the game sort of count, you step in the box and you're already 0 1. That can't feel good. 1 2. And Tapia fists it fair down the third base line. Arroyo goes first to third. Tapia's got a double, and Arroyo is tagged out. Big turnaround third. Eddie Rosario got it into Austin Riley to cut down Arroyo, and there's two down. Well, Arroyo kind of getting aggressive around third base. Febles was actually waving him in. It looked like Arroyo made his own decision to stop and try to get back to third base, but at that point, the throw was already in on Riley. Good throw from Rosario to get him there, and they put that tag on. You see there, kind of putting that tag on him there. But Fabulous was looked like he was waving him. He wanted him to score. It's almost like Christian didn't trust him. That's where you got to trust your third base coach. A little indecision around the bag. By the way, Christian Arroyo promises to have an entertaining interview coming up whenever his day is over. He'll chat with TC. <laughs> He's always good on the mic. He is entertaining. So two down, Tapia at second for Rob Ref Snyder. He's down nothing in two. I think the hitters will adjust. They will get ready. And again, we mentioned before, the young pitchers, this won't be a problem at all. They won't feel rushed. This is their routine now. Bouncing ball left side, and Riley handles this one, and the Sox leave a man in the top of the first here in Northport, Florida. It's the Toyota Washington's birthday. Line up for manager Brian Snitker. Ronald Acuna Jr. leads off at right, followed by Matt Olson in his second year with Atlanta. Austin Riley bats third and plays third. The veteran Eddie Rosario is in left in the cleanup spot. Ozzy Albies is only DHing so far this first week of spring training. Michael Harris, the second reigning National League Rookie of the Year, is in center. Bob Grissom, we told you about it short. Chadwick Trump does the catching, and Luke Waddell is at second against the first of many arms we will see for the Red Sox today. The left-hander Matt Dermody, 32-year-old Iowa native, who last year spent most of the season in Triple A with the Cubs. 
And he gets Acuna to loft the first pitch in the center. Rymel Tapia puts it away. One pitch, one out loop for Matt Dermody. Well, the Red Sox defensively, we look at the infield here. Matthew Lugo, he will be at third base. David Hamilton's your shortstop. Christian Arroyo will be playing second base. Bobby Dahlbeck, he'll be at first. Across the outfield left to right, you get Greg Allen in left. Rymel Tapia in center field. Rob Refschneider in right field. Caleb Hamilton does the catching for Matt Dermody. It starts out with ball one to Matt Olson. Yeah, Dermody 91 93 with his fastball. He's a four pitch mix. He's got a slider, changeup, curveball. Going to be a few days till we see the seven starting pitchers who are competing for those five starting jobs in the Red Sox rotation. Corey Kluber will be the first to go on Tuesday as Olsen rolls a one out single into right field past the dive. Of Christian Arroyo. That's one of those ground balls that last year was easily an out as the lefty hit it into the shift. This year, the shift has banned. You need a minimum of two players. Have to be two guys on each side of second base. So there is no shallow second baseman in right field. That's gobbled up easily last year. And I'm sure Matt Olson right away is starting to maybe like these new rules. Two on the left side of the second base bag, two on the right, and the feet cannot be on the outfield grass. Here's Austin Riley. What do you think the biggest impact of that shift restriction is? I think it's going to help lefties. Mm -hmm. I mean, lefties, I don't know what, what you're looking at. You know, how do I hit a ball hard? Which has got people to want to loft the baseball again. Now there's more holes in the infield. Riley fights one into right. And Rob F. Snyder with the shades on on the track is there for out number two. TC, uh, what are you seeing down there? Yeah, Mike, it's interesting. You guys have already used the word adjustment several times talking about these new rules. And down here in the dugout, talking to Alex Cora, hitting coach Pete Patsy just before the game. And they both said their guys are ready for this. There's been so much talk about it. They said these guys have had to adjust to big league rules, to big league pitching their entire career. They know how to adjust. They think it'll be a quick process. We'll see as we get closer. But so far today, everyone seems locked in on the rules, guys. Yeah, it's going to be a lot to sort out for everyone here, not just today, but over the next few weeks. And Alex Cora talked about it today as Eddie Rosario popped one foul out of the reach of Matthew Lugo that these guys have been making adjustments their whole career. That, that's what you do as a pro baseball player. Yeah, and I think the minor league is, again, no problem at all. But I still believe that there's some veterans that come in stressful situations. You may not see that until April. Kind of, that's when you revert back to some bad habits. That's where I would worry about it more. You know, you get here in spring training and talk to some pitchers, you can only shake twice. If I want to shake three times, the clock runs out. So down here, I'll just throw that pitch no matter what, because results don't matter. Right. In April, I don't want to throw that pitch, right? Maybe I step off, take a ball, whatever it might be. We'll see. 0-2 is grounded to third, kicks away from Matthew Lugo. And Rosario reaches. Well, Lugo, you can't shift, but he was shifted over against that lefty. He was in that shortstop 5-6 hole. This ball's hit pretty hard. Just kind of pops up on him. Looked like he had good position on it. Hard hit ball. Hit from Rosario. Lugo, the youngster from Puerto Rico, 21-year-old. Former second round pick of the Sox back in 2019. So two aboard for Ozzy Albies, serving as the DH for the Braves here today. He's going to likely DH in a couple of games before jumping in there at second base in about a week, according to Braves skipper Brian Snitker. Offseason surgery on Albies' throwing shoulder back in October. Hits it hard on a hop to short, and David Hamilton goes the short way to Arroyo for the force on Rosario as the Braves leave two in the bottom of the first. A cool today park. Temperatures in the 80s. Only a few clouds out there hovering beyond the ballpark.
Lou Merloni, Tom Karen, Mike Monaco, our entire crew with you for the Grapefruit League opener. And game two for Lou Merloni in the booth. But game one with the new rules. Yeah. And we've already seen a violation. You know, you know, he gets up, Rymel Tapia gets up, wasn't alert at the eight second mark. And next thing you know, he's called for a strike. You got to be alert. Now the hitters can call one timeout. After that, it's a strike. Bobby Dahlbeck leads off the second. Yeah, Manny Machado made big league history, at least of the spring training variety yesterday with the Padres when he got banged mm -hmm. for an automatic strike early on in the Padres game. Well, different spring training for Bobby Dahlbeck. He's come in the last couple of years. He's that starting first baseman. Now it looks like it's Casas' job. And really it's up to him to play some corners, third base, first base, but figuring this thing out offensively. It's this one hard on a line to right as Acuna chases back, but it bounces off the wall. Dahlbeck speeds to second, and he's got a leadoff double here in the second. And that's a good start. You know, you talk about you, the swing and miss stuff in Dahlbeck. We've all seen it. This is what you really like. He's such a strong guy. Shorten up that stroke. He can still drive that ball into right center. More contact than Bobby Dahlbeck. He's big enough, strong enough. The home runs will come. Bobby has talked about that here in spring training. He was chatting with Dan Shaughnessy and he said when I'm driving the ball to the big part of the field and not just trying to pull it's always better. And he's got the double here in the second in front of Narciso Crook serving as the DH for the Sox today. The other way is always the answer keeps you short keeps you on the ball you get start getting pull happy and you can't cover half the plate. You've had some fun just hanging out at the cages on the backfields watching guys swings uh, you're you're loving life down here Mike I just sit and watch I could watch it all day long the kids come out at one o'clock when the big leaguers are gone I'll sit and watch them for two hours Sox prospects they might need to put you on salary soon <laughs> with how much info you've picked up down here Chris and Ian they got it down these guys do a great job <laughs> they but. sure do by the way we welcome Folks watching on MLB Network as well, not just Nesson, across the country. 3 0 the count on Narciso Crook, non roster invite at the green light against Colby Allen. Yeah, 3 0, why not? This guy last year with the Cubs showed a lot of pop, 19 homers. Right there, that swing and miss. He had 178 Ks and 362 innings. The big, strong guy like this, make more contact, do damage. Rolls this one up the middle past Allard and on the backhand Luke Waddell's throw is dug by Olsen for out number one. A really nice job by Olsen getting down. It's a great job by the second baseman getting in front of this ball and releasing it. But you're going to see Matt Olsen get down low and see this ball at that level. Gets a really good look at it but a productive out from Crook as he gets you know, Dahl back over to third base with one out. So 90 feet away. That's still the case for Caleb Hamilton. Sox catcher non roster invite claimed off waivers back in October. Braves bring the infield in like a lot of teams in baseball. It doesn't matter what inning it is anymore. At first inning they'll bring the infield in some of the numbers analytics show that's still advantageous to do so. Bring them in here in a second. One oh. That's a strike from Allard. So far I don't think any pitchers have come close to this zero on the pitch clock. It's almost like a non factor for them. Kicks the leg at nine seconds remaining. And Hamilton floats it beyond Riley, a base hit against the drawn in defense. Dahlbeck scores and the Red Sox strike first here in the second. It's the one bad scenario when you bring the infield in. If things aren't going well, you can bank on it, right? The fisted pop fly line drive that if you were back was easy out for this infield. But with the drone in, Caleb Hamilton will take this knock in the RBI. So it brings up now the eight man in the Red Sox lineup today. 21 year old Matthew Lugo who gets an automatic strike called on him 
before the AB begins. And we've heard some of these guys, they're allowed one timeout. A lot of people in the past in the minor leagues used it before the first pitch to get themselves settled. As Lugo gets hit by the pitch, so after taking the automatic strike, he gets drilled, and the Sox have two aboard. I think it's interesting that both violations have come on that first pitch. Mm -hmm. When you get into the box, you have you know, the opportunity to, to call a timeout right away. As you see, that clock's running down, and Lugo's not alert. He's not looking towards the pitcher. He's not ready to hit. Which surprises me. A minor leaguer that's dealt with it in the past, you'd think he'd use that strategy. You know, call timeout before you step in. Just take your time, and as the at-bat goes, now all of a sudden you're in the flow. As you said on that timeout usage, they have found in the minor leagues that you want to extend your 30 seconds. So again, 30 seconds between batters. If you use it then, you've got more time to get set up. Or they have seen guys do it once two strikes are called, and sometimes in a full count. Mm. To get some thought process going, that two-strike approach. I think I'd probably want to use it right away. Yeah. Settle in. Yeah. Two on for David Hamilton. And again, we've used this phrase that MLB has come up with, alert to the pitcher. Again, with at least eight seconds on the timer, as Lou said. And so that means both feet in the box and your head is looking at the pitcher. Doesn't mean that the bat has to be up cocked over your shoulder, but you got to be square toward the pitcher, at least looking that way with both feet ready to go. This is an exciting hitter here, David Hamilton. 70 bags last year of double-A Portland. That's all? Yeah, and he put, put him on the 40-man this offseason. Still looking for that approach at the plate to kind of match that skill set. Get on base. Do some damage. Reaches out at the two-strike offering and floats it into center. Uh, Michael Harris the second is there for out number two. You know I'm saying? Do some damage on the Bates paths, right? Keep the ball out of the air. Plus, plus speed. You get him on first base. It's usually a bag. Maybe even two. It's still second, still third. But you want more contact? Well, ground balls. That would help. So the speed's still retired and back to the top for Greg Allen. Parts of six years in the big leagues with four different teams, most of that with Cleveland. Some time last year with the Pirates. Foul back, nothing at two. It's a good fastball in your half in that first pitch. 92 kind of froze Allen a little bit. Came back, looked like his cutter. Comes down about 85 miles an hour. A little more depth than maybe most cutters. Almost a borderline slider, but he throws it hard. O2. And he goes to the off speed to strike out Allen. But the Red Sox strike first and lead in the second against the Braves. Here in the Grapefruit League opener for the Red Sox, who've got a 1 0 lead on the Braves. And now the Sox give the ball to one of their offseason acquisitions to boost the bullpen, Richard Blyer. You know, the lefty they got for Matt Barnes in the offseason out of Miami. He's a strike thrower. He's going to be in this pen to go with Jolie Rodriguez. Two different types of lefties, but gets a lot of bad contact. Starts out against Michael Harris, the second. You know, 90 mile an hour sinker. He's got a cutter that he uses a lot. He's got a slider change. He doesn't get a lot of swing and miss strikeouts. But again, this type of guy, go back to contact, bad contact. And you know, I think Alex talked about him today. They came in Rodriguez, more of a power guy, exceptional stuff. It's a nice little mix of lefties they have out in that pen. And in that pen, it's going to be a lot of emphasis on strike throw. We have heard that here throughout the offseason. And these first couple of weeks of camp, I mean, Haim Bloom has, has used the phrase, we got to take back the strike zone. We're both sides of the ball, really. The bullpen strike throwers, same thing with a guy like Kluber, offensively, swinging at strikes, putting the ball in play. It's important. 0 2. Harris fouls it off. Does look nice though. Want to look out there and not see the shift. Infielders on the edge of the dirt, can't be on the grass. 
off speed and Blyer strikes out Harris. And there's one gone. Good slider. He's uncomfortable at bat. Off a pretty good hitter there at Harris. Paging the ninja. We've got a sword from Sox pitching here today. Yeah, isn't it nice to look out there and yeah. just know that people are where they were meant to be? Didn't feel right the last few years seeing some balls off the bat caught. What always got me as a hitter, you know, you're taught to hit the ball back up the middle of the infield. Yes. yes. And as a fan, sometimes you even watch the TV angle, bam, one hop right past the pitcher, you like base hit. Meanwhile, it's a second baseman shortstop standing right there. It's like it's not fair. Yeah. Von yep. from the batter, 2 0. And I know a lot of people say, well, then adjust. Just hit the ball the other way. You know what? You try to do that with 95, and I'm not sure if it's going to cut, sink. It just, <laughs> they had a magic wand in my hand trying to hit. I'm fighting for my life <laughs> up here. <laughs> Trust me, I was fighting for my life every time. Yeah. Well, when we were doing games off monitors, I would get fooled by exactly that. The roller up the middle and thinking off the bat, ooh, this, this is a run scoring single in Easy. the center. No, there's a guy there. Right. Two and two. So change up there for Blyer, got him out front. We were just off that line drive to right field off a of lefty. And it just, it's an automatic out. Now, a little more room out there. That's why there's an emphasis on putting the bat in the ball. Alex Cora has talked as well about that ball into right field that it'll put a premium on the right fielder's defense as well. And he's talked about Alex Verdugo needing to be more active out there and that he's going to have to be quick to pounce and then that throw to third when a guy goes first to third is going to be all important as well. Brings back the range of a second base kind of defensively. 2 2 is lined into center field and it drops in front of Tapia. Vaughn Grissom's got a one out single here in the second. Soft low line drive. He barreled it, but he was out in front of this. He did get the ball in the barrel. Tapia came in hard. I think last minute decided to pull up. I think I already talked about it with some of the infielders. Seeing the ball off the bat for the first time early on in camp, it, it takes some time. They're professionals, but it takes a few days to. I think later on in camp, he comes in and dives and catches that ball. Chadwick dropped the batter, the catcher in the eighth spot for the Braves. What were the first few days of camp like for you? Awful. <laughs> <laughs> Stressful time for me in camp. Why? Well, I never came in with a job. You know, every single year I came in, it was, you know, am I going to make this team? There's no givens, there's no nothing. I had to get comfortable at second, comfortable at short, comfortable at third. And every game I was fighting for my life, you know? I couldn't just relax. 0-2 is lined to Tapia. Sizes this one up for out number two. Yeah, it wasn't fun. Was, uh, you, Paris? And, and listen, that was just dead red. <laughs> okay, and, and, and I took advantage of it. Turn and burn. Well, here's the thing. Pitchers early on in camp, they're just trying to locate some fastballs. And I'm not going to sit around and wait. I don't have time. Like, I don't have time. I got to make this team. So I would jump on fastballs early on in camp and try to get some knocks early. Pickoff attempt over to first from Richard Blyer checking on Von Grissom. Now this is the other part of this, right? Disengagements. So guys on first base, you only get two. You can step off, throw over, whatever it might be, but he's already got one now. Grissom takes off and Waddell spoils it foul. Now you can actually on the third attempt, you could try to pick the runner off first base. Right. No rules. But if he is safe, then it is a buck. And I know talking to people in minor league baseball, you start thinking about Bach strategy. You know, sometimes for a lefty, it's worth trying it a third time to see if you can get him cheating. Ground ball left side. Lugo backhands and throws out Waddell. And the inning is over for Richard Blyer in the second. 300.
Back here at Cool Today Park, where the Red Sox and Braves are going at it. Meantime, back at Jet Blue Park, Chris Sale threw his first live batting practice of spring. He threw 23 pitches with Connor Wong catching, facing Verdugo, Casas, York, Palka, Duran, and others. No hard contact. Soft liner by Daniel Palka. <clears throat> Palka, rather, the hardest hit ball. A good crowd of teammates and coaches on hand to support. He threw one inning as planned today. Next up, Sale will throw two innings, go up and down on his normal five-man rotation. After that, he will make his first appearance of the spring. Could be a week from Tuesday here against the Braves. But maybe the most important thing we'll be watching over the first few weeks, guys, is how Sale handles facing batters. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see that unfold. And, boy, Alex Cora said to TC today when TC asked him that he's even more excited than Sale is and that Sale is the one saying to AC hey let's pump the brakes let's go step by step here. Yeah you know, it's good to see him throwing live right and but you're always like okay how's he feel the next day how's he going to feel next week. He's very important I expect him to be really good when he's on the mound this year. Christian Arroyo nubs one back to the new Braves pitcher Jesse Chavez who throws out Arroyo for the first down here in the third. I mean last year you know, there's a couple of fluke injuries and you know the elbow was healthy got a whole offseason to that strengthen that elbow again. Can I predict fluke injuries like last year breaking a pinky or falling off a bike. No. But the all I care about is the arm you know the elbow and the shoulder and that should be good. Brings up Rymel Tapia. Who doubled his first time down the third base line. And Chris Sale has said here in camp that hey, I turned 34 in March, but my arm is, is technically 30, right? I don't know if it works that way, but I'll buy it. Yeah. If he says it, I'm in. Ball at a strike on Tapia. But you know what he means, right? Yep. There's not 370 innings tacked onto that thing the last couple of years. Seven guys for five spots, at least as it stands right now in the Red Sox starting rotation. Tapia slices another, and he serves his second base knock in the left field in front of Eddie Rosario. And Tapia dives in safely with his second double of the ball game. Boy, good athlete again, staying inside the baseball for the second at bat now. Right out of the gate, he's thinking double. You gotta love the aggressiveness. Good speed, beats that throw to second base, but if you're pretty good if you're Tapia right now staying inside driving the ball the other way. Maybe that bigger bag helped him with that extra couple of inches sliding into second base. First second and third they used to be 15 inches. Of square surface and now they're 18 inches. I've heard the guys really. Talk about how it's affected them other than when they, they practice running the bases they say the edges are really hard. Around second base or first base, you hit that edge, it's really hard. And if you get your steps messed up, the top of it's a little soft, hmm. almost a little squishy a little bit, but no problems turning two up the middle. Ball and two strikes on Rob Refsnyder. Grounded to third is first time. I think the biggest impact on the larger base will be at first base. Number one, the injury factor. The first baseman get his ankle out of there. But the bang bang plays at first. You can see a lot more infield hits. Snyder pops it up toward the Braves dugout and out of play. And 90 feet is always measured to the back of the bag, so it's still 90 feet. But the front edge of the bag, if you think of it toward home plate, is now three inches closer than it has been. Is it bad that I never knew that? Like 90 feet to the back of the bag? I always thought it was to the front of the bag. I didn't know it either. So it's always been 88 feet, nine inches? And now it's 88 feet six inches to the front. Some quick math for you, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Appeal down to first. Ref Snyder didn't go. But yeah, it's. I think you're going to see. Because how many times in instant replay do we sit there and the foot's in the air and they call them out? Well, I'm going to be safe. My brain is in a blender. It's all good with all this. Ref Snyder went around. And Chavez strikes him out. There's two go. Chavez, 39 years old, 15 year veteran here. He can still, he knows how to pitch in and out. You see that sinker down and away. That's a pretty good pitch. 
I don't know if John Luca was going to give it to him. I think he went on that check swing. That was a pretty decent pitch by John. So Tapia at second, and the second AB for Bobby D. Who had that opposite field double in the second. Came around to score. The only run so far. I mean, it is faster yep. this game, the way it's being played. No question about it. It's the way it used to be played. Right? You want more action. You don't need a pitcher out there for 35 seconds. Dahlbeck stings this one to right. Acuna is back. It is gone. Bobby Dahlbeck unloads with a two-run shot and adds to the Red Sox lead. That's really nice to see against a 1-1 heater. He can drive the ball, ball out of the ballpark, basically foul pole to foul pole. There's really no reason to ever get pull happier for a Bobby Dahlbeck. Now, he's driven the ball twice, you know, out to right center field. You'd love to see that. And that one gets up and leaves the ballpark easily. The ball is smoked. That felt good. You think the first few innings feel good for Bobby Dahlbeck so far. Oppo double. Oppo two run tank. And he has scored one and driven in two. Here in a very different spring for Bobby Dahlbeck, like you said. Nice job. Guy like Chavez sinking it. He gets the ball up in the zone. As a hitter, that's where you want it. That's not where he was looking to throw it. He made him pay. Nothing and two on Narciso Crook. Finds this one to right. Acuna ranges back, reaches up, and the inning is over. But not before more damage done by Bobby Dahlbeck here in Northport, Florida. Now for the spring training spotlight presented by John Deere and Christian Arroyo. Coming off a career high 87 games played last year and you think GP games played is one of the big stats of the Red Sox season. Yeah it really is and not just for Arroyo but a few other people involved but games played. I mean that's that's the big number. How many games can I get out of Christian Arroyo when he is out there in the field. I think he gives you plus defense at second base. I think we underrate or some people do I should say his defense at second quality at bat. You know, gets works the count. He's a great player. Can he play over 100 games for you at second. Caleb Bort is the new pitcher and starts with strike one to Braves leadoff man Ronald Acuna. Yeah Alex Cora in talking about Arroyo has said it's not like he gets hurt because he plays more. It's been the other way around when it's stop and start playing time. That's when he feels like the injuries have cropped up for Arroyo. He had that weird one right when Alex put him at first whether it was the groin or whatever it might be. So he's had some strange injuries but. It's just an unknown. You know, at the end of the year, if you, if, if you tell me he's 115 games, then you're good. Yeah, you're good at second base. You feel good about it. Just can you trust it? One, two. Acuna pulls it past David Hamilton in the left field of base hit. That's how he greets Caleb Bork. Yeah, Caleb Bork, one of the guys maybe fighting for this one of these extra spots out in that bullpen. Just kind of hangs a breaking ball here right now. He's pretty much a two-pitch guy. He's got a lot of thunder. 93, 96. He can hit 98. And that slider is a tight, tight break on it. But that one there just got left up in the middle of the field, middle of the plate rather, for Ronald Acuna. Can't do that to him. Now Matt Olson as Ort steps off for his first of two unpenalized disengagements. A couple of the umpires signal that. If you're just joining us, we have had two automatic strikes called in this game, and we also saw Braves catcher Chadwick Trump reject the new baseball from the home plate umpire, just trying to buy a little bit more time as well. And that is something I think the umpires will keep an eye on. Um, coming up with any kind of an excuse, you know, whether it's the catcher or pitcher saying, I can't hear the pitch come five times in a game. Why don't they switch it out? They will, they're going to keep an eye on that. Acuna takes off, and Olsen hammers one into right center field. Off the top of the wall. 
Acuna scores all the way from first on the move, and Matt Olson. Well, let's see. Now they're saying it was gone. Olson has homered on a bullet to right center. This was a rocket off of or fastball down in the zone. You see there, not a bad pitch down, but in today's game, those lefties, man, that's right where they want that ball down over the middle of the plate. He puts a charge into it. Talking about a guy last year that hit 34 home runs. He loses his first one of the spring. And hits above that yellow line. Mm. So a two run shot off Caleb Bort. Brian Snicker is not messing around with the lineup he's got in there here in the Grapefruit League opener for the Braves. Team coming off 101 wins and its fifth straight NL East title. They've got a franchise record payroll this year of 200 million. And they're trying to hold off the Mets and all the money that Steve Cohen is spending. And then the Phillies coming off a pennant. Strike three calls. Caleb Ort sets down Austin Riley. 0 2 comes right at him. Freezes him with that heater, but you're right. You're looking at the Atlanta Braves, and it's sort of like this gold standard now. Remember, here's it was the Dodgers. How do you win and have a farm system? Now you look at the Braves. Look at all of these guys that they have tied up now for the next. How many of them are 2030, 29? This team is going nowhere. So it's going to be interesting to see how this approach goes up against Steve Cohen and the Mets, which just gives out money. And a lot of it. I'd rather have this approach. There's so many good young players locked up at reasonable contracts, and Mike, you just don't see some of the dollar figures, the reasonable contracts that these guys sign. You don't see it throughout baseball. They've done a great job. Alex Anthopoulos leading the way in baseball operations for the Braves. Of course, up deal in those. I mean, deal. Wow, I'm Bloom. Hey. Going way back, aren't I? Hey, back to my days. Talking about what they want to do, though, with their young players. Kind of tie these guys up rather than getting the free agency. Sword from Rosario, and it's one and two. I mean, you think about Michael Harris, who was less than three months into his major league career when he got eight years, 72 million in August last summer. You know, all these seven, eight year deals, too, all of them are attached with a team option, yeah. and some of them, too. And they're all prime years, right? None of these contracts take anyone to 41, which is what we got to see in the offseason. Ports 1 2. And Rosario flips it into shallow left. Greg Allen is under it for out number two. Brings up Ozzy Albies. Rolled the short on a force to end the first inning. His first time. Coming off an injury riddled season last year. A couple of separate issues a fracture in his foot and then a fracture in his pinky. It happened right after he came off the IL. He is one of the great personalities and young stars. With the bright personality to back it up in this game. Talk about personality. It's one of the reasons why my son's become a Braves fan. Oh. Guys like Ozzy Albies, Ronald Acuna Jr. Likes the flash. Now is it socks as well, or is is it a Braves? He's at the exclusive? age where it's players. Mm. It just so happens to be a few on this team that he likes. You know, it's like, and I kind of got to the same point too, right? Just like players. Good, that missed by much. Well, give me a little 3 0 gift there. Bottom of the zone, but he could have. Four pitch walk, and Albies is aboard in front of Michael Harris. I feel like for me, favorite player growing up was Nomar. And God, I'm you old. helped get me my first <laughs> Nomar autograph. Wait, so your favorite player growing up was a guy I came up to the minor leagues with and played with? I am old. Well, Sorry. you are young. That One was, of the two. That was unintentional. It really was. Thanks. <laughs> Rubbing it in. 
So I got you a, a signed ball. <laughs> yep. My uncle, the late through, Richard Fusco. Through mutual friends. Good you family. Know. Yep. Great family. Connected with you, and you connected with your buddy Noah. So thank you. All these years later. You're very welcome. Harris stings one in the center field, a rocket off Ort. Albies to second. More hard contact from these Braves regulars. And there's two on with two out. You know, it is hard contact, and Ort might not be happy with some of the location of some of these pitches. But you know, you're pumping strikes right now. Again, belt high, fastball, middle of the plate. Same location down a little to Olsen. He hung that slider to Acuna, but he's throwing strikes, right? Get the middle of the plate, then you start hitting the corners as camp gets going. Strike one to Von Grissom and strikes the big focus for K. Labort. Last year in 28 plus innings with the Red Sox, it was 15 walks. Now the numbers were better from late August onward after he rejoined the Sox. Grissom pulls it to Lugo, who ranges left, and the inning is over. But Matt Olson with a two run shot to get the Braves on the board here in the third. After our Red Sox coverage, for a special My Story featuring the stories of four college sports trailblazers in honor of Black History Month, presented by Berkshire Bank Home Lending. Alongside Lou Merloni and Tom Karen, I'm Mike Monaco. We go to the fourth inning and the left-hander Dylan Dodd, former third round pick of the Braves a couple of years ago, is the new arm for Atlanta with the Sox up a run. Yeah, they like him. Number 13 prospect in their system. Split time between A ball and double A. Got a good arm. As you can see there. Nine, but he's 93. Good, good changeup slide slider and a curveball. Slider's the second best pitch. And he is pounding the zone on Caleb Hamilton. Who leads off here in the fourth for the Red Sox, who send up 7 8 9 against Dodd. O2. We are moving quickly here, and uh, it's a change in, in how you broadcast, it's a change in how you consume it. And again, we told you in the minors. On average, they chopped off 25 minutes per game. And last yesterday, there were two games, the spring training games out in Arizona. Both of them right around two and a half hours. Uh, I like. Listen, I've always loved this pace. You know, got a little stressed out watching that Padres game. I felt like it was <laughs> like anxiety, almost like it was rushed. But it hasn't really felt that way today. It's businesslike. And Dodd strikes out Caleb Hamilton on 95 for the first out here in the fourth. Ties. Turn him up on him at 95. That's an impressive arm. That's the reason why they like this kid. Brings up Matthew Lugo. And just for comparison's sake, last year in the majors, average game time was three minutes or three hours and seven minutes. And in minor league baseball last year, the average two hours and 38 minutes. So, so that's a half hour difference mm -hmm. or thereabouts. That's a big difference. Yeah. I think more importantly, though, it's the action within the action, right? It's not necessarily three hours and 15 minutes, but get this thing going. And like that, Dylan Dodd has come in. He has struck out two guys in what? Maybe two minutes. I think He's a good action down and away too here. It's Lugo. I think he wanted it in. He missed away, but still good power behind that fastball was able to do it. Brings up David Hamilton. Takes strike one on 94. Mike, the number I, was, I saw a lot of, you know, it was they call it time between batted ball event. Mm -hmm. and it used to be about two and a half minutes. It's a batted ball event into center. From Hamilton to Harris, and we will have more on that great data. What a tease that is from Lou Merloni. Here we go. Among my patients, I often. Well, on Nesson is brought to you by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. Mass Mutual, an official partner of the Boston Red Sox. And by buyatoyota.com. For offers not seen on TV, visit buyatoyota.com.
Ah, yes, all the scenes from Florida at spring training here in the Grapefruit League opener. Red Sox on the road today in Northport, Florida. Cool Today Park, the home of the Atlanta Braves with the Sox up one as we already zoom into the bottom of the fourth and Wyatt Mills takes over for the Sox. Flying by, isn't it? It's a pretty quick inning. Wow. <laughs> the last half inning at that one stat. We were talking about batted balls events and it was the two and a half minutes and the problem was last year it got to almost four like four minutes in between a batted baseball right so that's just it got out of control it was too slow need more action even in the early 2000s it was about three minutes between yeah. and now you're talking four minutes between what they had last year in major league baseball it's a tough watch it, just, it really became a tough watch. You watch three or four minutes of a baseball game, and it's a 2-1 count. And you, it's been three or four minutes. Right. And you're not estimating. It was two minutes and 29 seconds, the last half inning we had, with Dylan Dodd working for the Braves. I mean, that's ridiculous. A little time out in the field. Caleb Hamilton shooken up a little bit. Now, this is where the umpire can use the discretion. Injuries, you kind of hold his hand up and work with the pitch clock. Can we call him the pitch clock guy? Yeah. Okay. Good with that. Chadwick dropped the batter, and he did what you talked about when he came up to the plate. He took his time out before even seeing the first pitch from Wyatt Mills. Goes ahead, nothing and two. Trump pops this one up in the left center. Tapia calls for it. One away. Well, Mills is the guy they acquired in the offseason from Kansas City for Jacob Wallace, minor league pitcher. And as you can see, he looks a lot like John Schreiber. And it was almost like they said, well, Schreiber looked so good for us last year. Let's go with another guy that looked just like him in case something happens to Schreiber. But he'll be in the mix. He split time last year in Seattle and Kansas City. Fastball slider guy. 92 fastball, 80, 81 mile an hour slider. Similar look. Forty two career innings in the big leagues. A Gonzaga product, former third round pick of the Mariners six years ago. Facing Luke Waddell. I think the separator for Schreiber last year was location. I, I, he got worn down. I mean, he, Alex almost had to use this guy in the middle of the year because they had nothing else. He got worn down at the end of the year, but that location, that was the separator for him last year. Bullpen's going to be very different this year for the Red Sox. It's so important when that gate swings open in the seventh that the entire roster feels like it's secure. Cut on and missed as Mills elevates at 89 to punch out Waddell. And there's two gone. Yeah, I like seeing that for Mills. You know, sinker slider guy down low, changing the eye level. As a hitter, you see that fastball up. As a hitter, everything is down. Slider down, sinker down and away. Just changing the eye level of a hitter. Being able to elevate with that fastball from that release point is impressive. So two down, back to the top for Ronald Acuna. Singleton scored his last time in the third off Caleb Ort. Colorful elbow guard from Acuna. Especially with that sinker, there's some extra movement at the end. Kind of coming right at you. It's the last thing you want to see here at day one. Right into the kitchen. Acuna pops this one up down the right field line. And Ref Snyder chases and it bounces foul. I buzz your tower up and in. Here comes that slider down and away. Baseball needs to keep Acuna healthy. Yeah. I just think he's great for the game. The energy. The game's changed. It was let the boys play. That's kind of the, the way it is right now. And I think a lot of people appreciate that sort of viewpoint of it. Acuna here in Braves camp, he has said assuredly that he is 100%. A couple of years removed from the surgically repaired knee. Got asked if, if he could go 40-40 this year. 
And Acuna said, first and foremost, my main goal, just stay as healthy as possible. Yep. Play every single game for Atlanta. Mills 3 1. He walks Acuna on five pitches and a two out base runner for the Braves here in the fourth. And the Festival of Baseball is back. Catch all the excitement at the 2023 World Baseball Classic starting March 8th. Get your tickets today at worldbaseballclassic.com. Acuna gets pinch run for here and gets a nice round of applause from the Braves fans here as Forrest Wall has come in to run and he's not waiting around. Swipe second on Mills and Hamilton. He just took off. Good jump. Feels a little like high leg kick. About that time, but really Hamilton had no shot. Ball's outside. Couldn't even get his feet underneath him. Comes right in. Wall comes right in. Takes it. Ryan Castile is the batter, and he takes a strike to make it one and one, batting in the spot of Matt Olson. Who in two trips had two hits. Single in the first to the pull side against no shift, and then a two run home run to right center in the third. How you doing in two games of spring training keeping up on subs? Oh my God. The first sub isn't the problem. When the second the sub comes in for the sub, then then I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's a white out. I don't know. Breaking ball off the edge. <laughs> two two. And a strikeout for Mills. Elevates again. Couple of K's in the inning for Wyatt Mills in the fourth. Back in Florida here at spring training, top five on the way. Red Sox up 3-2 on Atlanta. Top of the Red Sox lineup on the way here at Cool Today Park. Greg Allen's 0 for 2 with a ground down to short and a strikeout swinging. And faces Dylan Dodd back to work for the Braves for a second inning. Line to third and caught by Joe Dunan just into the game. Nice play by Dunan. You know, Allen gets this changeup from Dodd up in the zone, up and a half a little bit, but gets out and hooks it, barrels it enough. I feel pretty good about it, but Dunan obviously pretty good ups, taking a double from Allen. Good bloodlines for him, the nephew of Alex Rodriguez. Now number one. And now Christian Arroyo for what figures to be his last at bat of the game. Reached on an error in the first and rolled back to the mound his next time in the third. I mean, why not bring Dodd back out? Even work up a sweat. What do we say? It was two and a half minutes that last inning? 229. You know, back in the day when pitchers used to pitch like this, as a hitter, you wanted to call timeout and slow him down. Now you only get one. Remember, guys work quick. Yeah, like Mark Burley, you know, you want to call timeout. Even when Pedro was on the mound, the other team, when he got rolling, they're trying to mess with his rhythm and call timeout. You're not allowed to do that, really, as a hitter, other than just once. Cut on and missed. Dodd blows 95 past Arroyo to gone. And as a hitter, sometimes you have that quick at bat like this, and you're like, wait, what just happened? I should have called timeout because here comes a heater. Kind of outer half, elevated. Right by Arroyo. Again in a month, we've seen him, or two or three weeks, we've seen him shoot that to right center. So two down for Rymel Tapia, who has a couple of opposite field doubles. Pulls this one to first and caught by Ryan Castile. Stayed in the game for Matt Olson at first. So one, two, three for Dodd. Hey, Massachusetts has launched with sports betting. And at Nesson, we look to educate the sports fan. Back in Florida, let's go down to TC, who's with Rob Refsnyder. 
Yeah, Mike, thanks very much. Uh, Rob, our first game with the rules. It's moving along pretty quickly. How's it feel in the middle of it? Yeah, it does feel fast. Uh, it's kind of weird seeing uh, all these established guys kind of get out of their routines and things like that. But it's moving fast, and uh, I'm sure the fans appreciate it, though. It seems like the fans are pretty engaged. The guys were just talking upstairs about that one timeout you get now. The old days, you might try to slow his cadence a little bit. There's a lot of strategy behind where you're going to use that timeout. Is that kind of in the back of your mind as you're up there? A little bit. Uh, I don't have much of a routine, honestly. So, but uh, yeah, you, you really want to just get in the box as fast as possible. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, see, we saw a couple of those was calls today in the box uh, with uh, you know called strikes uh, early on. I, I think the, it was the batters, not the pitchers today. Yeah. You came on last year, such a great uh, end with the Sox. It went so well. You signed back with them this season. How good does it feel to kind of have a place on this team coming in? I know you take nothing for granted, but knowing the confidence they have in you and what you were able to do with them last year. Yeah, it's great coming back, uh, just having, you know, familiarity with the players and, and mostly the coaching staff, front office, um, you know, top to bottom, just having that familiarity is uh, super, super nice. And uh, it's, it's really nice to get back on the field. And, you know, Bobby had a nice day today. And, um, you know, Bobby worked really, really hard this off season. you know, some mechanical tweaks here and there. So it's nice, to, you know, first couple of bats really paid off. So, um, yeah, it's good seeing some guys out there. And um, you're just trying to get your feet wet, get some timing. And uh, I think that, I mean, the best feedback is spring training at bat, spring training playing. And, uh, you know, you kind of digest it. And then, you know, um, you work on things that you'd like to work on uh, tomorrow. So it's, uh, but it was nice getting back out there. You've been through a lot of these spring trainings with a lot of different teams. Lou Maloney was talking about the mindset. You come in and, you know, the beginning days sometimes can be the toughest, right? You're kind of grinding, trying to get yourself established. What are the early days of games like for you? Yeah, you're right. You're, you're just trying to get your feet wet, but, um, you know, it's a little bit different this year for me, but uh, you just pass as non-roster guys. It's like, uh, you know, uh, to, to say results don't matter even in the early games, you're lying. You know, you, you want to get a hit up there. Um, every single bat it's just it's kind of just the the way the game is you want to have good at bats but you want those results as, as a non-roster guy um, but this year um, it's, it's it's the same thing it's like uh, I grounded out the first time third base and like man I really really wish that one would have fell through there um, but uh, it, it's, it's nice just getting the box boxing your timing and uh, kind of just digesting it and then uh, you know getting with the hitting coaches early tomorrow and kind of um, you know seeing what you want to work on that the next day but um, yeah it's uh, those, those first couple games are always you know, a little nerve-wracking, just trying to get, uh, get on the board a little bit. The routine's going. Thanks, Rob. We appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Rob Ref Snyder with us, guys. Back up to you. Self-described unassuming guy who said even this offseason, Rob and his wife, they celebrated the fact that it was his first guaranteed contract coming into campus. He said a little bit different, said he always got to the point where he wondered, would that feel different? And said it's actually even more of a driving factor for him because he knows that the team is putting confidence into him. We had a great year for them. I mean, it was a pleasant surprise. He kind of came in here, you know, going through different teams, the Yankees, Toronto, Tampa, Texas, Minnesota, came in and settled in, you know, in that fourth outfield spot, right-handed bat, gave you great at-bats. He was everything you'd want. 307, six home runs, 21 uh, RBIs. Did a good outfield. Eddie Rosario pulls one off the glove of Nico Goodrum, a Red Sox newcomer into the game at first. And with one out here in the fifth, Rosario is aboard for the Braves. Well, a little hooking, a little one hopper to Goodrum, and you wonder if maybe take that extra step, kind of get in front of it as a first baseman, use your body. Even if you can't cover, rely on the pitcher getting over there. But it's new to him. I mean, he's kind of a middle infielder, but he's a good athlete. He's a big guy. So he's kind of learned how to play first base as well. So one on, one out. Ryan Sheriff got a ground out to third to begin this inning as he came on out of the Red Sox bullpen and now faces Eli White for the Braves. And Ref Snyder said to TC, it is different. Pace of play, seeing veteran guys having to adjust to that. And what we've seen unfold so far. Runner thought about going, and White fouls it off. You know, Cora said he thought by March 30th they, they would be adjusted fully to it. I, I want to see that from some of these veterans. You know, you don't need to throw a pitch with conviction. The results don't matter down here. Sure, I'll throw you a fastball before the clock runs out. No big deal. But in April, you know, the games count. Results count. 
And one pitcher tell me that he felt like he could only shake twice and that clock's going to run out. So whatever he puts down, I'm going to throw. Well, that's fine here, but what if it's first and second, nobody out? Are you going to throw a pitch without conviction? Are you going to step off? Is it going to be ball one? Are you going to start to panic? So I, I want to see what it looks like in April when stress comes in. Line drive right center field. Willier Abreu's on the move, but he can't get there. Clangs off the wall. Rosario speeds from first and scores without a throw. And Eli White has tied this game at three in the fifth. Well, Sheriff, wonder how he can pitch against right-handed hitters. Looks like a little two-seamer down and away. Does a nice job staying on it, driving it. No chance for Abreu or say down Rafaela, who's out in center field right now. But it's a tie ball game. Brings up Justin Dean in the spot of Michael Harris. How would you have trained in the offseason if this had happened when you were a player, you knew this would come in? Would you have done anything different or any adjustment you had to make with your timing as a hitter would just take place here in February and March? For me, it wouldn't be that much of a difference. You know, maybe at second base is the only time I might start with my feet on the grass. And I have to be careful about that defensively because now infielders, no shift, feet going to be on the dirt. And offensively, I would sort of just see how long my normal approach on that first pitch is. You know, walking to the plate, getting in, doing, you know, digging your hole, kind of clearing it out, stepping out, getting back in. If I felt like it was too long, fix the bat and gloves, you know, then that probably start thinking about using that timeout right there and getting into the A-B. But it's not that big of an adjustment, I don't think, for, for the hitter. 0-2 oh, from Sheriff. To think we may have been deprived of Nomar's famous mannerisms. If he had played <laughs> with a pitch timer. Well, I tell you, everybody always felt like, oh, he took so much time. I think he forgot watching. Never left the box. Yeah. His left foot did, and he did it. And he was probably a lot quicker than most. You know, he didn't walk around. And he just started tapping those toes until the pitcher was ready. Fastball fouled off. It's some rituals, though, boy. Man, that's a superstitious dude. <laughs> Everything was five. Yeah. Five steps up the stairs. Right? Guys give him a hard time about it? Yeah, maybe at first. You know, but when you hit 376, you know, with 30 home runs, who would you want? <laughs> you're pretty much good. You can have whatever routine or rituals you want. Boy, it's second. Two balls and two strikes on Dean. Fly ball center field. Say down Rafaela backs up. White tags and advances. Two gone, White to third. A strong throw from Rafael is showing off a little bit of the arm in center field. He is a defensive whiz. I mean, this is a guy that people rave. He's been defensive player of the year for the Boston Red Sox in the minor leagues the last two years. He's an elite plus plus defender in center field. And it can be a highlight reel on a weekly basis. Throwing a good arm up. That throw to third base. 22 year old from Curacao. Brayden Shoemake is the new batter for the Braves here. Talented prospect. With White at third. 2 0 from Sheriff. Sheriff's a guy, 50% fastball, he's 90 sinker, he's got a slider, pretty much a two pitch guy. I believe he's playing for Team Israel, correct? Like I know he did in 2017, he played in the WBC, and I think he's doing it again this year. Two and one, the count on Shoemake. Good sliding slider there for Sheriff. right and makes the grab on the move. We're tied through five here in Northport, Florida.
Back here at Cool Today Park in Northport, Florida. Sixth inning. We're tied up at three. Tom Karen with you down here with Christian Arroyo. Done his first day of work in the books. It's all different. The, the no shifting, the where you can stand, the pitch clock. How weird was today for a guy who's been playing baseball for a long time? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the pace of the game is definitely faster. You can, you can kind of, you know, you get a good sense of it. Um, just being in the box, I'm not. I'm usually a guy I like to step out, kind of get my ground when I do one thing or another, and uh, you kind of just have to be ready to go. So it's going to be an adjustment period, but again, that's part of baseball, and it is. It goes quicker. So even getting up at the at bat, what's that like? I mean, does it all feel sped up a little bit right now? Yeah, yeah. You know, you get in there, you kind of try to get your, your little pregame routine. As Carlos Fables takes my, you didn't need that towel. <laughs> uh, it's funny we're playing at Cool Today Park, and it is not cool at all. It is really hot. Um, how about but no. out in the field? How about out in the field? Because that's as a second baseman now, you got to be careful. You can't touch the grass at all, correct? No, no. I mean, what we were talking about before, like, I get in there, my thing is I like to get my heels on the grass and kind of come in from there. And one of the umpires had said to me, hey, make sure your feet are on the, on the dirt. So now I'm looking down at my feet, and now there's no shift. So I'm, like, trying to make sure I'm not, you know, getting a getting a violation on our pitcher so it's going to take you know a couple days to get used to but it's just one of those things that it's kind of weird to see in action and you're doing all that and you look up and there's eight seconds left on the pitch clock yeah yeah and that eight seconds goes pretty pretty quick so for you coming back here now healthy ready to go uh what's it mean to get this shot here to be the second baseman of the red Sox and to know your healthiest camp begins yeah i mean it feels it feels great you know i, I love i love uh, the fact that i get opportunity no matter no matter where it is um and I just want to take it day by day and pitch by pitch and, and not try to overthink things as I'm saying that as my last at bat. I'm overthinking every pitch I swore at. But uh, yeah, it's part of baseball. you got to get back into the groove of things. But, um, you know, definitely something to work on for tomorrow. Kike Hernandez, uh, so excited to be the, the shortstop. Uh, given the chance here, tell me a little about the early work the two of you are putting in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're just trying to get as comfortable as we can with feeds and the pace of play. And obviously now, I mean, Kike's always a high-energy guy. I kind of consider myself a high-energy guy. So getting used to the, the pitch clock and stuff and, and, and getting used to the rhythm of the game, I think it'll be easier for us just because, you know, we're that's just kind of how we've always played anyways. Um, but Kike in particular, we've, we've talked before, and that's kind of our goal is to play fast. So. You've been down here for a while getting ready, but these games begin. What are the early days, early at-bats, early games like for you? Is it always a little strange to get those first games as you start to get your feet back under you? Always, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things. Getting your timing back is always, is always the first thing you have to do. And today, obviously, timing didn't really feel like it was there. First at-bat kind of smothered a, a cutter. Uh, second at-bat, you know, Chavez, just a veteran pitcher, just the X on the outside third, and then throws me a nice slow looping curveball. And, Sitting back on those pitches right now, it's tough, especially with the change in the you know, change in speeds at this point. And the last guy, um, I mean, he had a sneaky good heater. So, um, you know, I, again, take it day by day, pitch by pitch, and get your work off the cage and just get your timing back. Been a lot of turnover in the clubhouse here over the last few years. Mm -hmm. You're suddenly one of the guys who's kind of been here on the longer side of things. Uh, do, you, do you start to take on a little bit more of that mantle of, you can't say leadership. I know you're not going to call yourself a leader, but the experience you've had here in Boston, you can share with other guys. No, for sure. You know, I think uh, all the guys we've brought in have been successful in, in, in big markets. We get the L.A. guys and wherever they're coming from, they've they've been successful and they're veteran guys. And for me, I just, I just kind of, try to compliment that you know I'm not trying to be the guy to go out there and and uh, you know tell Justin Turner how it's done that guy's gonna tell me how it's done still so um, you know you got to kind of know your role a little bit and for me I, I still I try to play the humble game because this is a humbling game and, and from the other side I those guys are veteran guys I'm gonna let them teach me everything that they know you know and I know I don't have anything figured out this is a tough game and you got to keep you got to keep getting better and better and better, and, and I know that those guys are going to help me out. So I, I like to bounce a lot of stuff off of them. These guys with a lot of experience have come to this team, guys who've won championships. Uh, is it an interesting vibe? It's not often you kind of have a group like that suddenly all coming into a team. I know the expectations are low, but these are guys who've won elsewhere. What's the vibe been like the first couple weeks? It's been great. You know, getting to talk to all the new guys and, 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 and getting to, to get to know people, just not even as a baseball player, but for, as a, from a personal standpoint. At the end of the day, we all have families outside of the field. Guys have kids. Some guys are, you know, girlfriends, fiancés, wives, whatever. And um, it's been it's been awesome so far. I just can't wait to, 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 to see it continue to develop. You're a Florida guy. How hot was it today? It was hot. It was, yeah, it was toasty. And it's that, I know they always say, oh, it's Arizona. It's a dry heat. Well, Florida, it's a humid heat. And, I mean, I know you can't really tell, but 
jersey soaked. Definitely, uh, definitely sweat through this entire jersey. I feel like Evo from last year. Evo was going through four or five a game. It felt like, and I feel like that today. But uh, you know, it's good to get back in the back in the, in the swing of things and, and to get going. It's 15 and snowing back home. Enjoy the heat. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> thanks, Chris. You appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. We both know better than complain, guys. When it's that cold back up north, Mike. Yeah, TC, your uh, Twitter mentions people are going to be angry with you after <laughs> reminding them of the discrepancy. Narciso Crook is down nothing in two after Darius Vine struck out both Ryan Fitzgerald and then Nico Goodrum after he had used a lengthy at bat. Good to hear from Christian Arroyo. Yeah, you know, he talked about the timing at the plate, and I think that off speed is really what struggles early on, right? Because you just sort of want to attack a fastball, the first breaking ball you're not out in front of. Crook hammers this one down the third base line, and it caroms off the sidewall, and he's got a two out double. Here in the sixth inning. But you know, it's the off speed pitches. Sometimes you're out in front of early on in camp, you're on time with the fastballs. But for me, even so in the field as well, just see Crook here getting this this breaking ball actually does a nice job of staying back, kind of like a hanger and lacing it down the left field line. But defensively, you want to get your timing. Ball off the bat in the game, you know, sometimes if later in the year when you're comfortable, you take that step, step and a half, you get the good hop, no big deal. That hesitation in your first spring training game action sometimes causes you to get a bad hop, and you want to get as many ground balls as you can, too, to feel comfortable. Ronaldo Hernandez, 25 year old catcher from Colombia, bats here with crooked second and two down. Yeah, I thought that was probably the most interesting thing as well. That the pitch clock made him not want to stay back and to fight that temptation. Nothing in two on Hernandez. I think if I was if I was hitting now, I say, okay, how do I not feel rushed? Okay, as a hitter, do I just stay in the box and get ready as soon as I can and so I don't feel rushed and get bats over before I know it. Hernandez strikes out three K's in the inning for Darius Vines for the Braves in the sixth. Baseball on Nesson is brought to you by Subaru of New England and the redesigned 2023 Subaru Ascent. Bigelow Tea, the official hot tea of the Boston Red Sox. And by buyatoyota.com. For offers not seen on TV, visit buyatoyota.com. Here in Florida, Red Sox spring training grapefruit league opener. Good to hear from Rob Refsnyder and Christian Arroyo with TC. Up in the booth alongside Lou Merloni, Mike Monaco with you. Christian Arroyo was talking about defensive positioning as well. And that's one of the differences, along with the rule changes this year, that has changed in baseball. Now there's uniformity with how the infield is structured everywhere. All ballparks now, it's the same 95 foot radius from the mound to the edge of the infield dirt and, and they do that to keep the shift rule the same regardless of what ballpark you're in. Yeah they don't want a deeper cut so you get an extra three or four feet and you're 98 feet right from from home plate but I like the fact that it's universal it wasn't always the case it's something that I learned early on in my career you know coming up especially playing shortstop you know with a guy like John Valentin has been around a long time See, don't don't place yourself depth wise based on the outfield grass because all the fields are differently. Base it off the baseline. So you get in that baseline between second and third. You stop, you turn around, you take 20 steps and you figure out where your range is and you remember that number. Because my range might be a step and a half from the outfield grass at, grass at Fenway. And when I went to Detroit and counted it from the baseline, I was probably three or four or five feet mm. from that outside boundary. It was, a, it was a deeper cut and it was really important to kind of get that down. So it's like better GPS now. You, you just kind of know yeah. right where you can go. You have more benchmarks that you can yeah. step it off from. If I was actually a step and a half from the outfield grass and just relied on that, I'd be in a different depth wise in all these different fields. And then the ground ball, the timing would throw me off. You know, with just what you're the internal clock and what you're used to. So baseline is always the same in every ballpark. That's the consistency thing. So I used to measure it from there. Now it's more universal. So you can base it off the cut of the outfield grass. Jake Faria, by the way, is the new pitcher for the Red Sox, and he's got a two ball, two strike count. You're in the last of the sixth inning in a 3 3 game. Faria slider right there. 
He's pretty much fastball 91 and 93 range. He's got a slider and a split. Remember him from Tampa. Like a split there, just kind of buried it. We've also not had many full counts in this game. No one's waiting around. And there's a walk. Second baseman number 78, Al So man aboard against Faria. And nobody out. It brings up the ninth spot in the Braves lineup, Cal Conley. That pitch timer. We haven't really anybody getting too close. Against 15 seconds, nobody on 20 with a guy on. And the minute that pitcher starts his delivery from the stretch, lifts that leg, that's when the clock stops. And he's on time. From the windup, it would be that traditional step back, go the step sideways. A lot of guys now from that windup are traditional and they kind of stand sideways. But once that happens, the clock is off and everything is legal. Bouncing ball towards second, Valdez ranges to his left, throws out Conley for the first down here in the sixth. And we've talked about the new rules all throughout this afternoon. Big story across baseball here right at the end of February. Now the bases, I think, are, like we mentioned before, it's will impact, I think, first base and close plays. And a lot of people believe it'll bring the stolen base back. Forced wall, first pitch swinging at Valdez. Two pitches, two outs for Faria. They told over to third. And a lot of the more stolen bases is, you know, disengagement rules where pitchers only allowed to either step off or throw the first two occasions. Now he can throw over a third time, Mike, but if it's safe at first base, it's considered a box. So. You know, after you throw over a couple of times near base runner, maybe you get a jump or get a little bigger lead. But of course, the big one's the pitch clock. Yeah. And as we've seen here today, this thing moves at a very crisp pace. They got a lot of data from the minor leagues, and once everyone adjusted, once they got into the meat of the season, it averaged out to one violation every other game. So a half. A violation on average per game. And these are the disengagements that you're talking about. You can do it twice unpenalized. And then we start talking about box and if there's advancement versus not advancement, does the count reset? We have so much time to get into all of that. Mm. But we hope we don't really get into that. And when you're talking about that many disengagements. The hope is that everyone adjusts throughout spring training and March 30th rolls around and this is a well oiled machine that MLB hopes is a better product as Faria strikes out Ryan Castile leaves a man at third. We go to the seventh in Florida tied at three. Time now for our high strength steel play presented by your New England Chevy dealer. Bobby Dahlbeck. Already driven the ball to the left right field rather his first half at this time gets it up and over for the two run shot really good to see from Doc Bobby kind of shorten up that swing make some more contact use the whole field he's got power from foul pole to foul pole and more contact hopefully in the future with Bobby Dahlbeck you can see a little more of that it's a beautiful swing he had an early arrival to camp Alex Cora had a meeting with him and Alex Cora has said he's in a new position coming to camp this year without that guaranteed spot over at first that of course is Tristan Casas and we'll see how Dahlbeck responds still only 27 years old well they, at some point you start learning and I did this as well that you can only control so much and that's the stuff you worry about and today he's taking care of business you know he swung about real well a couple of times the other way barreled some baseball so you go out there and play improve your own game and things they work out you know if you, 
make more contact, he'll be in the big leagues. Nick Sogard bats for the first time, and he strikes this one well to center. But Justin Dean runs it down, and the new pitcher, Danny Young, has his first down to seventh. By the way, the lineup tomorrow for the Red Sox that they will roll out there back in JetBlue Park in Fort Myers. It's a fun one. Tristan Casas leading off, followed by Rafael Devers, then Justin Turner, then Yoshida in the cleanup spot who you saw yesterday, then Verdugo, Kike, Duvall, Wong, and Goodrum. And that has a lot of names that you expect to see on March 30th. Yeah, and I'm liking the names too. We're seeing here in Winkowski with Chris Murphy, Brian Mata, and Brandon Walter. Three names. Those last three names, guys that you start thinking about big league depth. Guys are going to be in Pawtucket. Three stars that this organization really, really likes. You're going to be able to see tomorrow following Josh Winkowski. One one to Edwin Diaz, Tug foul. How do you feel about starting pitching? Red Sox starting pitches. Yeah, deep. it's deep. You know it, it, it. You can't talk about this team without using the word injuries, right? But right now everyone's healthy, and you sit there and say they have seven guys to choose from. Paxton, for some reason, for me, I still have him over here, like on the outside. Cause I don't know what to expect. It's been a while. Like at least Sale, I've seen come back, and I know the arm is healthy. But with Paxton, I, I just haven't seen him. I thought I'm stumped on live BP. Thought he looked good. Health-wise, he seems like he's feeling good, but. I don't know if he has to pitch himself out of this rotation or if they think he's a guy that can come out of the bullpen, but they've got six, seven pretty good options. It's deep. Bounced in two and two. But of course, it's about innings pitched, right? It's about starts, having these guys healthy. Ben is the only guy that right now you can sit there and say, I think he can give me 160. Cooper did it last year. So. A lot relying on Chris Sale to get back to it. 63 starts the last two years for the Sox from Nick Pavetta. You know, and that's kind of what you want from him. And, and I look at Kluber the same way. Like if he's a little bit older, but those two guys can give you those kind of innings. To me, the upside comes from the other three, whether it's Bayo and Sale or Whitlock or even Paxton. Number off the end of the bat of Diaz. Young. Bare hands for the second out. Are we not talking enough about Brian Bale? Like with how he finished last year. And remove the, the, the arm tightness yep. from it. And, and let's hope he's back to full strength quickly. And it sounds like he's on that path. Like, is there enough buzz for Brian Bale and, and the possibility of a huge, huge season from him? Doesn't seem like it. Almost like there's more buzz the day he got called up. Yeah. Right. And and he sort of struggled that first three or four starts, and people just sort of fell off that bandwagon. And you really didn't see the way he threw the ball in September. And, and to me, he started pitching to his strengths rather than the hitter's weaknesses. If the guy's a good low ball hitter, that's fine. But at some point, you're gonna sit there and say they can't hit my sinker. And it looked like he kind of got to that point, confident in his stuff. But you're right. The word is that he's. Through 90 feet the other day, he had that little setback. A little sore arm, a forearm was sore, but they think he's okay. He's going to be throwing a bullpen here again soon. Another one of the exciting young prospects in the organization is this guy, say Dono Rafaela. One, two. Two and two on uh, Rafaela. For, for Rafaela, it really just comes down to swing decision. What pitches we want to swing at. He's got such good hand eye coordination. He makes contact with so many pitches. Doesn't walk much, doesn't strike out much. But he expands the zone and gets himself out. He's got every other tool you're looking for, you know, in a young ball player. And if he can make good swing decisions, swing at strikes, you're going to be seeing here in, in Boston at some point, probably this year. He was one of the players, this being my first day here at camp, that I was excited about to just go introduce myself to. Yeah. And I got excited the last few days seeing your tweets pop up with videos of him swinging on the backfields. Well, I come down the first couple of days. I don't need to see 
you know, Kike Hernandez take BP. Yeah. I want to go see somebody I've never seen before. I've heard a lot about, and I did. Rafael, it takes strike three called on a well located fastball from Danny Young, who works a one, two, three, top half of the seventh. At Berkshire. We talked to him the day after, and uh, we went over the article, and uh, <clears throat> I read it. I didn't like the headline because I don't think the article, the article said what the headline said. I know how it works, you know. He writes it, somebody puts a headline. Uh, we had no issues in the clubhouse, first of all. Uh, he learned a lot last year. He actually told me that right now he's just looking for somebody to, to, to follow because everybody's new. Tristan Casas, Mass Lives, uh, Chris Cotillo wrote a piece on Casas, and the headline included the words that Casas' pregame routine was an issue in the Red Sox clubhouse in September. You just heard Cora saying it wasn't uh, an issue with the team in his mind, but he said his unusual pregame routine of sunbathing out in right field, taking a nap in the clubhouse, was discussed, and that adjustments have been made since. He's now taking his naps in the nap room, and he does his sunbathing up on the Coca-Cola deck. Alex Cora pointing out that's closer to the sun, so it's a better place for him to do it anyway. But Casas is an interesting guy. He has a different routine, and as a young player, he needs to find ways to do that within the context of a major league clubhouse. Cora said, like all players, he is learning to adjust at the major league level. Also interesting that he said Casas is looking for leaders to emulate, guys to follow, and with a lot of newcomers to the clubhouse, that's an ongoing process over these couple of weeks. But guys, it was an interesting conversation with Cora today to hear how a guy who has great expectations coming into the organization is learning to keep his unique identity, but blend it in to the team framework of that clubhouse. There was a lot of interesting stuff, TC, that Alex Cora, when he talked for, gosh, three or four minutes on that topic alone, when Alex Spear of the Boston Globe asked Cora about it, that was as hard as I've laughed at something AC has said at a press conference in a while when he said, uh, yeah, the Coca-Cola porch is closer to the sun. Yeah, yeah, a lot of the reaction to Chris Tillo's uh, article was really pro-Casas. You know, in that article, you know, it's sort of like you know, the way you treat rookies. And I would say 30 years ago, it was so much different. 20 years ago, it was different. 10 years ago, it was different. And I don't care where it is, but when you're up here with your shirt off and no shoes, you know, in right field on your first day of the big leagues and sleeping on the floor in a small clubhouse, you know, people are stepping over you. It's sort of puts attention your way. And then usually when rookies come up, it's one of those you know, be seen, not be heard type of thing. Well, they were seeing a little bit too much of him out right field with that shirt off. You just can't do it. And, you know, you talk to him, and then he makes the adjustments, and and we're fine, and we move on. Nor with Goudinho gets a pop-up on the infield to Nick Sogar over at third, and there's one away to begin the bottom of the seventh. By the way, TC, speaking of closer to the sun yeah. and sunbathing, he brought the bucket hat today, but he's in the shade. Yeah, so he's he's all right right now. I think brings up the cleanup spot in this Braves lineup against Godinho. Yeah, one more point on the the Casas you know, sleeping on the floor in the middle of a very small clubhouse. They have a sleep room. They put it in there for that, right? Like that's where you go and take naps if you want one. And I think once you understand that. Everything is fine. And then you go, I thought it was more interesting, though, talking about looking for someone to follow. Yeah. That's, you know, maybe it was Eric Hosmer last year, this year. Um, look at TC, styling that hat. Amy, do it after the batter. Uh, but looking for someone to follow, and you know, who exactly is that? Is it a guy like Justin Turner that hasn't been here, that really hasn't played a lot of first base, that is over there a lot more here in spring training? So. 
That's an interesting comment. And Casas, in the most literal way possible, he's a really interesting guy. Oh, yeah. He does things differently. And he's comfortable. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. Just, you know. Magnarese Sierra pops one up on the infield. Edwin Diaz shields, backpedals, two down. And you never want to use the term like, you know, figure out the way we do things here because it just seems aggressive. But, you know, when rookies come up, you know, there are certain things. It's veterans. It's about respect. They've been there a long time. They played in this game. They played at a high level. I'm not going to ruffle any feathers. I'm just going to learn from you guys and go out there and do my best. It sounded like they cleared everything up, right? Yeah. And I remember talking to Alex Cora last year about it around the cages when Tristan Casas had just come up, and he uttered the same phrase then that he has now. We made the adjustments. Yeah. Talked about it then, talked about it this week in light of Chris Cotillo's article. A lot of Chris Cotillo airtime, huh? The great Chris Cotillo. He had a very busy winter. Yeah, a lot of big stories coming from Chris. Off the edge to Eli White, 3 0. Alex Cora said Kevin Brown would have killed Cora if Cora had been napping on the floor. And then Cora recounted his flight from Miami to L.A. for six hours. He's dressed up and he is serving everyone, all his teammates on the flight. That was his welcome to the big leagues. You know, a lot of those things, they're not mean spirited in any way. And a lot of times the rookies, it's almost like you you look forward to it. I mean, it means you're there, right? If I got to dress up and serve you for six hours, serve you drinks, that's what it takes. <laughs> you know, I'm in. Whatever. I'm in the big leagues. When I sit down in whatever costume they put me in, I'll be excited. A great throw from Ronaldo Hernandez to nab Eli White, trying to swipe second. And that's how this seventh comes to a close on a dart from Ronaldo Hernandez. Presented by Xfinity. Oh, we look at this from here from Ronaldo Hernandez. This kid's got a cannon. I remember he was in that deal that sent Jeffrey Springs to Tampa Bay. I mean, he's got a plus plus arm, really known for his throwing defensively. It's like catching anything else. They work on framework, blocking balls. But as far as throwing, that is his specialty, and that was a quick release with a strong arm. Sure was. Hey, the next generation 10G network only from Xfinity. The future starts now. 23-year-old right-hander Victor Vodnik takes over for the Braves, facing 2-3-4 and four in this Red Sox lineup in the eighth inning in a 3-3 game. And Emmanuel Valdez, 24-year-old from the Dominican, who the Sox, of course, got from the Astros last summer, bats here. Well, they love his bat. Yesterday, got the big blow there in the first inning to blow that game open against Northeastern, but still, base is loaded, laced a double in the gap. They love his bat. I think defensively, he can hold the zone at second base. But it's a it's a plus bat profile from him. Line drive to second right at Cal Conley. One away. I know it was it Ref Schneider talking about wanting to get some base hits. I think early on, like this is a positive at bat. This is barreled line drive. It's Adam. I'm 0 for 1. But the staff in there is right now is loving that at bat, right? How hard he's hitting the baseball. To Ref Schneider's point. You can only handle so many of those, even if it's spring training, you like to get a couple of hits. But you're looking for positive, good at bats here in camp. Some of the young guys trying to impress the big league staff. There's Valdez there. Now it's Willier Abreu. Came over in that same trade, of course. 23 year old from Venezuela. And went to Double A Portland after the trade. Hey, we were talking last thing about welcome to the big leagues yeah. for a youngster coming up. Who are you most scared of when you came up? Was there anyone in the clubhouse that you were like, I do not want to rattle this guy and get on his bad side? You know, I, I was, when I came up, I was lucky. Mo Vaughn was, was the man. He was the leader. He's one of the best leaders that I've ever played with wow. in my career. And he had a pretty good grasp on anything. 
you know, Val, Val was the guy, you know, the infielder that you wanted to impress, you know, just try to not get upset at you, I should say. Well, you're Abreu, pulled it to the track in right center, and then a bobble out there by the Braves outfield puts Abreu at third here in the eighth inning. Well, Abreu splits the gap here, which is nice with one out. But rounded second base, I'm not sure if he trusted it. Looking at Febles, he almost felt like he was holding up. But with one, you know Febles is going to push it, try to get him over to third base. The relay throw gets one hopped, and obviously he gets plenty of time to get to third base. But much like Valdez, they love both of these left-handed bats that they acquired for Christian Vasquez. Infield in for the Braves, Ryan Fitzgerald bats for the second time. See him rounded second. See that hesitation just going into that second base. There was hesitation. Now it didn't come into play, but that's something I'm sure you know Carlos will talk to him once he gets the third. It looked like he did right away. You know, they always say make the stop, but the ball stop you. You know, when you're rounding that ball's in right center as you're approaching second base, that's when you gotta pick up the third baseman. And you gotta trust him. If he's telling him, let's go, you gotta get there to third. He hesitated. And now Fitzy slices one behind third and drops it down fair. Abreu scores. Ryan Fitzgerald delivers. And the Red Sox snatch the lead here in the eighth inning. That's the second time now that with the infield in. You know, you've seen that fisted line drive just over the out infield into the outfield grass and kind of paid the price on a couple of occasions here in the Braves. Fitzy just drops it in. Lost his grip on that. We saw that one-handed swing. But got enough of it to get out to the outfield to score that run and get the Sox ahead. If it's spring training, it means Ryan Fitzgerald is mashing one way or another for the Red Sox. The spring training sensation from last year with all the home runs that sent Uke in the fandom of Fitzy. Nico Goodrum. Takes a strike from Vodnik. Fitzy's got some good hockey here. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. You got some good moss working. I don't have the hockey hair though. No. You know. Oh. How you liking this? TV compared to radio. Oh, I love it. You know, I like it. it's all kind of right in front of you, kind of watch it with everybody else and you know, the radio is sort of describing, no one can see anything. Yeah. So actually you can make up anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> to the backstop, it's Gerald the third. No, it's uh I thought you were asking about the pace of play because I love that. Yeah. Like doesn't it feel? I know people out there watching right now, we are here we are in the you know in the seventh inning and actually the eighth inning. Jeez, I'm already losing track. Amazing in the eighth inning. But it's it's moving, right? Like there's Next batter's up. Here comes the pitch. Here comes some contact. That's what are you looking for? 2-2. Two -two. Goodrum strikes out. That's a good sinker there for Vodnik. This ball just sort of disappears on Goodrum. It's a good sinker. So two down Fitzgerald at third, and it brings up the very versatile Tyler McDonough. A couple of years ago, a third round pick of the Red Sox out of NC State. Switch hitter bats left. Real interesting guy. Called a lot of his games in college when he played for the Wolfpack for Elliott Avent. Pulls this one to right field, the base hit. Tyler McDonough scores Ryan Fitzgerald with a two out double here in the eighth inning. Oh, there you go. A little pinch hit in the eighth going up against the big league spring training game. No problem. He's got the one ear flap on a double flap. So you know he's minor leaguer, but he does a nice job with this off speed pitch. And he kind of pulls his hands in for the double. That'll feel good. Got to keep that thing on. Going around first. Nice insurance run here for the Sox. 5 3 8 inning. Back to Ronaldo Hernandez. Goes first pitch. Swinging under the glove of Castile into right field. 
McDonough rounds third. Wall's throw is not going to get him. The Sox add on here in the eighth inning. Well, that is big. I don't know if we're playing extra innings here in spring training, but it's always nice to add on. You know, 5-3, this is a big one here. Another little slider that Hernandez does a nice job of staying on. Just outside the reach. Tyler Toll over at first base, or Castillo rather, at first base. And the Sox get another run here in the eighth. And just having himself a little inning. Throw a runner out, a little RBI knock. That'll do from a guy who hit 17 home runs last year in Worcester in AAA, Ronaldo Hernandez. Nick Sogard bats with two outs and Hernandez at first. 2 0. We're talking about McDonough kind of do it all. This Sogard's kind of the AAA version of it, right? You play all these positions. Double A, I mean, just second base, shortstop, third base, split time as you see there between double A AA and triple A last year. Twenty-five-year-old utility guy, soft spot, yeah. got a utility love, got to respect those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Two one. I mean, you were telling me. Yesterday, when we were chatting on the phone here, I mean, you you would spend 15 minutes in one position, 15 minutes at another position, get your work in at each different spot because you had to. It was a different spring for you compared to Nomar Val. Well, you were really relaxed and get comfortable at one. You had to guys like that. You got to get used to all of them. Got to get work in. Sox get three in the eighth inning and lead here against the Braves. In the Grapefruit League opener after a three run half inning for the Sox. Make another pitching change and summon Sterling Sharp. This Red Sox pitching line brought to you by Ace Ticket. Ace Ticket, best seats at the lowest prices. Not the football player, but the <laughs> right hander, Sterling Sharp. Got a cup of coffee with the Marlins three years ago in the big leagues. Trying to get a little spring training hold here for the Red Sox. Faces Justin Dean to start this last of the eighth. By the way, we have talked so much about the rule changes, the pace of this game. It's bunted foul by Dean. We'd love to hear what you think. I mean, you're the consumer at home watching this game on TV. Chime in on Twitter, tag us in a tweet, let us know what you think. I I'd be curious. You know, we're experiencing this just with you and I and our crew in our ears. We have one impression of it. Be curious to know what the people out there watching think. I'd be willing to bet people like it. You know, it's just quick moving. You know, for us, like you said, it's an adjustment. You only have so much time in between to talk about a play or a player, so everyone's trying to feel this thing out. Back to back breaking balls and sharp strikes out Dean for the first down. As we mentioned before, even the umpires trying to get accustomed to the whole thing. Now they'll have a little buzzer as far as the pitch clock goes, and it's kind of like an NFL pitch clock, or, you know. Whereas, but the only difference here is at zero, there's a little buzzer, so the hand goes up right away. You know, sometimes that play clock in the NFL will run zero, and sometimes they give you that extra second or two. Other times they call it right away. This thing here, the umpire. We'll have that buzzer. He'll know when the clock hits zero. He'll call timeout. It'll be a strike or a ball, rather. It's a belt pack, and then you've also got another one, either on your wrist or your ankle, maybe on your forearm, something like that. One-one to Braden Shoemake, bounced foul. Well, they give him, they give the umpires the discretion to maybe restart it. Maybe a batter's got something in his eye. If he's already used the timeout, he may give him the benefit of the doubt. Bouncing ball to second. Valdez on the move, throws out Shoemake. Two down. Nice play by Valdez coming to his right, charging it. 
Getting that ball on that run. I've already seen a few at bats. I know this kid can hit. This is the question here at second base. And continue to prove out the in at second base in the field. He can help this club at some point. Tyler told the batter with two outs. Middle infield looks like Kike at short, Arroyo at second, and then wait and see on both. Adalberto Mondesi, his health, is he ready by opening day or is it a little bit delayed? And then does Trevor Story come back, as he put it, in a best case scenario in the second half of the season? And in the meantime, Yu Chang yep. will be the guy who's, you know, they really love defensively. In case they need him in a pinch. He got signed to a big league contract. Yes, and he's out of options, so you would think he would be there for that month of April. See how long Mondesi is out? And he's going to be in the mix when he gets healthy, coming back from that ACL. He's been running, you know, on the practice on the field here back in Fort Myers, so just a question of how quick he can get things going. 3 2. Roller foul. Casas at first, Devers at third, McGuire, Wong, maybe Jorge Alfaro catching, Yoshida in left, Duval in center, Verdugo in right. It's kind of how you project it out. That's ball four. And so a two out walk issued by Sterling Sharp. State Street Pavilion Club memberships include a climate-controlled club space, in-seat service, pre-game on-field access, and more. Plans start at 20 games. For more info, visit RedSox.com slash premium. Cal Conley, the batter. When you start going through that, that lineup there, Mike, and it's you need 13-13, right? The roster has to be 13 pitchers, 13 position players. You're talking about four bench guys. You got a catcher, you got Yu Chang, and you got Ref Schneider. Really one spot kind of left on this team to decide if everybody stays healthy, right? Always an if. Pitching staff as well. Everyone's knocking on wood for good health across that staff. Conley stays alive. You know, it's nice just this pace of play, seeing the pitcher staying on the dirt. It's kind of like what you're accustomed to seeing rather than catching it, walking around the grass to the back of the mound, taking your time, sitting, finally getting to the, the rubber and taking more time. I enjoy it. I think it's been fantastic here for eight innings. Strike three, swinging. Sharp sets down Conley and K's two in a scoreless eight. If you're just joining us and haven't been with us throughout, we've had two automatic strikes called. So that means on the hitters for not being alert to the pitcher with eight seconds remaining on the pitch timer earlier today. Yeah, they define alert as having both feet in the box, head up, looking at the pitcher, body in a position, able to quickly assume the hitting position. So you had a couple of guys on the very first pitch. Not get in the batter's box fast enough, or be alert, I should say. And next thing you know, it's an 0-1 count before pitch is even thrown. And for some of these guys to sort of feel it out. Once again, we heard a lot of pitch hitters talking about maybe using that timeout. You're allowed one timeout, using it before pitch is even thrown to get into your routine. And then once you're in the at bat, you don't need it the rest of the time. It is a whole new world that we are embarking on. This game started two hours and 13 minutes ago. Top of the ninth. Wow. That's what we're looking for. And there's been action. Michael Tonkin is the new pitcher to face 9-1 and 2 for the Red Sox who lead by 3. You know, to the point, you know, two hours and say 15 right now. I mean, it's 6-3. to three. There's been 10 hits by the Red Sox, 6 by the Braves. It's not like it's a one nothing game where... Now that they've sped it up, you don't see any action. So you don't take callers anymore. Thank God. But I did solicit. 
people's opinions of the pitch timer on Twitter. So we've got a few. I should say that. I like some of the callers. <laughs> <laughs> got out and missed. One and two. All right. So love the rule changes. This yeah. is from Jordan. It's a little clunky, and I imagine it will be for a bit, but by mid April, I imagine it'll feel like second nature. Austin Rob 75 vintage Red Sox fan here since 75 hence the Twitter name I guess and love the pace of play rules. Yeah, I think you will see it here today I think it's fantastic I, mean, I don't want to feel rushed through a game but it really hasn't felt that way here today at least Sox optimist must have a background in TV production. <laughs> He or she said even replays must have a live picture in picture to keep up with the pace. I absolutely love the changes. Hard hit rocket to short and a diving stab by Braden Shoemake on Sedan Rafaela. Well again when it comes down to Rafaela. You don't necessarily need hits which you need a smart swing decisions from him. And he gets a hanger over the middle of the plate, not off the plate, doesn't chase it. A good decision, sees a break a ball for a strike and, and hits it as hard as you can. Just a beautiful play by Shoemaker Short. Manuel Valdez now. Terry F, by the way, pace of play is great, but at the expense of an automatic striker ball, it's ridiculous and not worth it, in my opinion. Just so you can't say that I was only supplying tweets from one side of the vantage point. Well, the idea is you see less and less of them. I thought it was interesting. Get, you, know, you still get your five trips to the mound if you're the manager or the pitching coach. They're actually adding one now in the ninth if you've already used them up. The idea of that is, you know, if you go out to talk to your pitcher, it resets. So if it's if it's a big part of the game and it's down at three, two, you can call time and go talk to your pitcher. And maybe not have that automatic ball, which could be big in the ninth inning, right? They don't want it to come down to it. Valdez strikes out. And told completes the K one two three. We've only had two mound visits in this game. We're in the ninth inning. We are absolutely flying. Up for the 2023 season. Tickets are on sale now for opening day through July 26th. Visit RedSox.com slash tickets to purchase your tickets today. Bottom nine, Red Sox up 6-3 on the Braves in the Grapefruit League opener. And Joey Stock is the new pitcher. We'll try to nail it down for the Red Sox. Trying to remain undefeated here, Mike. You have, you have a reputation to uphold right. after a win in your debut One and yesterday. 1-0 against Northeast, and I'm trying to go 2-0 here. I mean, and take down the mighty Braves. Yeah. Forrest Wall leads off against Stock. Yeah, UTC got us off and running yesterday. <laughs> that first inning alone, by the time that was over, by comparison today, we might have been in the, the third inning. Yeah, I think so. We had full walks, a kid from Northeastern, but here today we've seen a lot of strikes thrown. What you do early in camp, a lot of early swings and counts. That plays a role in it, too. Bouncing ball right side. Valdez gloves, throws out wall, one away. Yeah, but as we mentioned yesterday, both of those games out in Arizona, both of them were two and a half hours. So you had an idea maybe what we're looking at. Hey, tonight, don't miss the NHL leading Bruins as they take on the Canucks. Catch pregame coverage starting at 6 with puck drop at 7 only on Nesson. You are one sport focus now. You are not kidding, my friend. <laughs> it, it is beautiful. <laughs> Ryan still, Castile, the batter. I still pay attention. Flares it over short in the left field of base set. Turned around 94 from Stock. One out base runner for the Braves with two outs to work with. You, know, you start getting to this part of the game. I remember coming up to the big league camp for the very first time. 
the second half of the game, you're playing with guys you've played with in the past, whether it's double A or triple A, and you actually start finding out you're facing the guys in big league camp that you faced in the past, right? Double A, triple A guy facing another double A, triple A guy, and very common, especially early on in spring training. That's why sometimes I think spring training numbers people get really excited about, whereas you really have to look at who they're doing it against. Mm -hmm. If he's two for three because he got a couple hits off a guy that was also in double A with him, you know, it changes. It makes, makes you look at it a little differently. Bobby Dahlbeck today, double off Colby Allard. Might start in triple A, but has pitched at times in the big leagues each of the last four seasons. Yeah. Two run home run off Jesse Chavez, who, as you said, is ageless. He's pitched out of big league bullpens for a while. In a month, we will overreact about something or someone or everything or ev of course we'll overreact about everything but it's always somebody's batting average and it's like well let's start paying attention of who he's hit is he hitting off major league arms or is he hitting off guys he's actually seen in the past in the minor leagues and I think it's something that you don't pay attention every day in spring training I get it you just see the final numbers and you want to see a kid rush to the big leagues. One out here in the bottom of the ninth. Joey Stock sets. 2-2. Two -two. Pulled high in the air by Joe Dunant. Into the left field corner. Fitzgerald is back. And it takes to the wall. Runners get tied up. Dunant to second. And the Braves have them at second and third. Trailing here in the ninth. That was a towering fly ball. And you could start to see it from where we are that it was coming back. You see the flags out in left field. They're blowing from the left field foul pole to right field. And you can see this ball coming back and Fitzy kind of running underneath it too much. Now when the ball drops, runner at first was thinking about actually, I don't know if he was halfway to second tagging. There was even more confusion as the ball came into second base. Well, just sort of misjudged that ball in left field, second and third. Now you got to play to the scoreboard. You still have three runs. Those two runs really don't mean anything. Castile at third, Dune end at second, and Magnarese Sierra, the batter, representing the tying run with one out. Ball started. They had to start in the stands. Came all the way back and about 30 feet fair. Wind really got it. Blowing left to right here at Cool Today Park. Cut out and miss. Good fastball. I hated playing left field. I tried it a couple times in Cleveland. You know, the infield pop-up is just up and down, and it's so different when you're in the outfield and it's not up and down. Couldn't judge anything. But, you know, can you play left, Lou? Sure. If you need, coach. Just give me a bat, right? Yeah. How many gloves would you bring to spring training? There was that outfield, two in the infield, first base, four. Modest, but still, it's yeah. a lot to manage. Stocks 3-1. Check swing, he went full count. This is the guy, it's the tie and run right here. Of course, you're worried about the long ball, but at the same point, you want to make him earn it. It's a knock here. You still get that one run cushion. 3 2. Bouncing ball towards second. Valdez charges and it takes a hop off him. Castile scores. Braves have him at the corners. And it's a 6 4 ball game here in the ninth inning. You're going to see Valdez hesitate the ball off the bat, and it's going to cost him. There's only one chance on this one, and that is to come at it hard and try to get more of a short hop and throw on the run. Might not have got him anyways at first base, but that little hesitation he had at first. See right there, the little half step, and then he keeps coming in. Now he's in a real bad spot. Top spin comes up, hits him halfway up the chest, and I think he's lucky just to kind of get in front of it and knock it down. Designated 
So the tying run aboard for the Braves. And Eli White is the batter. Had an RBI double back in the fifth inning and then walked his last time. Ball one from Stock. That's what I was talking about before. There's such a focus on offense in the game of baseball. You think that's where all the adjustments come in? That's where you think you can get into slumps? You can do it out in the field, too. And there's an adjustment early in camp, and that's the first step off bat off the ball defensively. If you saw that little hesitation, got him in a lot of trouble. As an infield, you want to get as many ground balls as you can early on. The more ground balls you get, the more comfortable you get in the field. You don't want to play the whole game and not get one, right? It's a waste. Two up. Outside, three balls and no strikes on Eli White. Placed him second short, short the right time to go. Every time I played second, I never got a ground ball. Every time I put the short, I got two an inning. So after a week, I felt great at short, and I felt lost at second because I never got any work. Bounced in, ball four. Four pitch walk, and the Braves have loaded the bases with one out here, and four straight have reached. That was nice and crisp until this inning here, and Stock got himself in a little trouble. Misplay fly ball out left by Fitzgerald, but falling behind hitters. Last couple has got himself in some trouble here. Stock had a nice year in A ball last year, pitching for the Red Sox in their system. Starts with ball one to Justin Dean. Went to that breaking ball. A lot of times when you don't feel it with the fastball, you say, okay, you know what, let's try flipping the breaking ball over. Maybe that gets you a nice little rhythm. He just lost that feel for it up in the zone. There's a strike with all number one. Six four three would be nice. Downstairs two and one. This guy's used to the timer, but you're getting a, a veteran in this sort of spot. Things are kind of losing some control. When you look up and you see six, five, four. <laughs> Panic a little bit. Fires with five. And Jansen will be the interesting one. Really interesting. Statistically, the slowest pitcher to deliver a baseball in Major League Baseball last year. Up and in, full count on Dean with nowhere to put him. Talk about stressful spots. He's got the ninth. You know, open it day, Orioles. Here we go. You got to challenge him here. Somebody once said, "What time to party?" Right I know here. him. Right here. And Stock misses and walks in a run. That's not what you want. Obviously not out there trying to fall behind and walk the ballpark trying to find himself right now a little bit of nerves called up for this game and he's asked to close this thing out on the road. <laughs> I'm sure he signed up for it when he woke up in the morning but he's in this spot and now Braden Schumann former first round pick of the Braves in 2019 out of Texas A&M. One oh pitch inside two and oh from stock. Good action up that bullpen. Gotta believe it's his last hitter, right? Would think so. Get a punch out. Two oh pitch. Three and oh on Schumann. Stock deals. Tie game. Oh. 
Well, you feel for him coming up here. Obviously, he just can't find it here. And Alex comes out to get him. I think when you look back on this game, regardless of where this thing handles right now, you, you look at the first eight innings as a kid coming in out of nowhere walking the ballpark, but let's see if we can get a call to the pen now. 6-6 six, six in the ninth. Welcome to the ball game, Robert Kwiatkowski, 25-year-old Red Sox farmhand who enters in what is now a tie game in the bottom of the ninth inning, and the base is still loaded for Atlanta. Well, you know, Ryan Fitzgerald's going to be coming into the infield. We talk so much about the shift. You got to have, you know, minimum of two on each side. So you can't have three and one. But you can still be allowed to bring in that fifth infielder, which is what Alex Cora chooses to do, and it's the right situation to do it. You got one out, the base is loaded. The theory is basically, you know, fly ball to the outfield, the game is over. The only issue is that Fitzgerald's got to get the outfield glove off his hand and grab his infield glove from the dugout. As you see there. So he stands pretty much right at the second base bag. Five infielders. Tyler Tolve, the batter. First pitch from Kwiatkowski. This is inside ball one. Obviously the ball up the middle of Fitzgerald. It's touched second base, turn two. Just to a middle infielder and it's hit hard. Turn two and get out of this inning as well. Slow roller, maybe you come home and get that out at home. 1 0. Fouled back one and one. Infield all the way in. Sometimes that middle infield opts to kind of be in that baseline. With a little bit more range. They're in on the grass. 1 1. Cut on and miss. I see a couple of walks already from Tolvin. One out, base is loaded. Kwiatkowski's one, two. Struck him out. That thing just takes a nosedive, and there's two down. Don't know much about Kwiatkowski, I'm not going to lie to you, but that split finger fastball right there is filth. This thing has some serious drop to it, as you see. Just disappears in the strike zone. Real nice offering from Kwiatkowski. And Ryan Fitzgerald with two outs. Moves into left once again. Cal Conley the batter. Ball one. I don't know if it's a can't call timeout thing, but they didn't give Fitzgerald the opportunity to grab his outfielder's glove as he ran out to the outfield, so he still has his smaller infielder's glove on the left right now. 1 0 pitch. Got a miss from Conley. Man, that split again to 88 miles an hour. Some good action on that pitch. It's not quite the same ballpark, but 88 split. I think it's Sawamura at 93 94 in years past. 1 1. There's a strike, and it's 1 and 2 from Kwiatkowski. You wonder what the decision will be from the managers here. Both teams going pretty deep in the pen. Fouled off. You know, early on in camp, but later in camp when a guy's going four or five innings, you don't mind maybe that extra inning to get somebody in that bullpen, but they've both gone pretty deep into it now. You don't want to go to the 10th. One, two pitch. Inside, two and two from Kwiatkowski. Big at bat here, Mike. My perfect record's in jeopardy. 1 0 in camp. Drama builds in the Grapefruit League <laughs> and viewed nationwide. Do you feel it? 2 2 pitch. Oh! Just off the edge with the split, and it's a full count. John. 
Luka. I mean, you got to give me this pitch. I don't know if he just loves the drama or what, but eh, maybe just a little bit off the plate. But could have rung him up easily. Uh oh. And now what? He's out. They have called strike three. Wow! This is mayhem. Oh! Automatic strike three called with the bases loaded in a tie game in the bottom of the ninth. This is baseball in 2023. Oh, the two strike strikeout. That's it. Two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Three two. Bases are juiced, and he wasn't alert in time. And they punch him out. Wow. You know, we, we can talk all we want about you know, it's it's day one. Let this happen in April, May, or June, and I like to see how the reaction is going to be. But you gotta learn your lesson, I suppose. Wow. That's how this thing comes to an end. That's it. Some boos ring out here in Northport, Florida. All right, so you got the clock up. Here it is. He did not get set. He was not alert. He thought that it was going his way. He thought it was ball four, game over. Instead, see that look in his eye. <laughs> I wasn't alert in time. And he's punched out. And that's it. The game's over. We got a tie. Wow. When the great Joe Kistig said, can you believe it? Here it is. Here he it didn't is have here. this in mind. You see it? It's at eight seconds. He has to be alert to the pitcher. Yeah, and Two feet in the box, head looking at the pitcher. And he just, he looked up maybe the last minute. Wasn't ready. I would say learning a lesson right there, I think, for everybody. I think this is something that, as you know, like a lot of people, Major League Baseball, they'll be showing this kind of video across the way now to other teams as well as like a learning moment but again i go back to it's spring training with we'll laugh we'll joke about it right now let something like that happen to De you know rafael devers in the bottom of the ninth at fenway park in april <laughs> but some people a little upset this one will make headlines across baseball for the next 24 hours maybe longer who saw this coming a spring training tie ends on an automatic strike before a full count with the bases loaded and that is how we say so long from Northport Florida 6-6 six, six, the score pitch timer violations batters three pitchers zip Lou uh, listen I know obviously the ending of it was was a little clunky or, or I would say different but I think for the most part for eight innings I think we got exactly what we were looking for like a nice fast pace there was a lot of action um, the ending maybe was a little bit what we're not used to, but I think we're starting to get the idea of what Major League Baseball wants, and I still think it's a good thing for the game. We will talk to you tomorrow, 1 o'clock, right here on Nesson, the Sox in Fort Myers, and they will have a lot of the regulars in action in the lineup, and then some young arms you'll want to keep an eye on on the bump as well. So, for Lou Merloni and Tom Karen, I'm Mike Monaco saying so long and our entire crew behind the scenes, led by producer Amy Johnson and director Ben Johnston, welcome to the team. We say so long from Northport, Florida. The Sox tied the Braves 6-6 in dramatic, if unusual, fashion here in Northport, Florida. 6-6, the final Grapefruit League opener. We will talk to you tomorrow from Fort Myers.